Um, there's a behavioral framework that I study. There's a field of psychology that I study specifically, which is behavioral psychology, which speaks to how an environment impacts an individual. There's internal self-awareness and there's external self-awareness. So internal self-awareness is your value system, your thoughts, your feelings. Those are things that are clear to you, but not really clear to other people. They're not observable. Yeah. And then you have external self-awareness, which is your behavioral patterns. Those are things that are obvious to other people, but not really clear to you. There's the golden rule, mm -hmm. right? Like treat people the way you would like to be treated. Yeah. We follow the mantra of the platinum rule, which is treat people the way they want to be treated. I can't treat you the way I want to be treated because we different people. Exactly. You may not like that. Yeah. But the platinum, you know what I'm saying? The platinum rule is let me treat you the way you want to be treated. And it may take a little bit of time. It takes a while. But once... I treat you the way you want to, anything that I need is gonna just come to me, right? Like we're just gonna have a better relationship. Here's the thing, there is a game, this one game that's designed for only you to win at. And if you just figure out how to play your game and put yourself in that environment, you're gonna win without fail. Welcome to another edition of the Social Brew Podcast. We interview dope people that do dope stuff. One of my closest friends is here today, and he's not on this podcast because he's one of my closest friends. He's on this podcast because he uh, mentored me in a very specific area. We talk about all kind of stuff. I'm way better at Monopoly. And it's my guy, Dewan Matunga. What's up, man? What's good, brother? How you feeling? Feeling amazing. Ah, good stuff. Incredible, man. even. Um... Tell me something about people. People are a product of the environment. Mm. Long, the long and short of it, Pause. That's that's what it is. Yo, stop being in New York, bro. I got, <laughs> hey, listen, New I'm York, a kid bro. from the Bronx, man. I mean, I, I apologize. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's just. So for what you do, uh, human behavior at its highest level, um, you teach people how to like really understand human behavior on a really, really deep level. And again, like you, you taught me a whole, whole lot about myself, why I do the things that I do. Um, but how do you introduce that to other people? Well, I, it always starts with self, right? right? So um, there's a behavioral framework that I study. There's a field of psychology that I study specifically, which is behavioral psychology, which speaks to how an environment impacts an individual, mm -hmm. right? And then there's a framework, um, well, there's, a mo there's three frameworks that I use to sort of help people understand because people learn in different ways. So some people you can have a conversation with them and they'll get it. Other people are like visual, they need to see it. But when they look at the information and then we start to have a conversation about their lived experience and where they come from, then we have a lot of those aha moments. Mm, yeah. Got it. So um, your your area of specialty and uh, expertise is uh, human behavior. And I want to go through this. I want to go through like this assessment step by step because I learned it. Um, you actually taught it to me for years. Um, Shouts out to Kendall Ficklin. He goes into corporate and mm -hmm. teaches people how to manage uh, their their office spaces using this framework. Um, and there's a lot of frameworks, right? You got your, you got your, what is it, Myers Briggs? You Enneagram, got, yeah, all of them yeah, joints, right? Things, yeah. One of my favorites is DISC, mm -hmm. but not only DISC uh, because you have like a three part where, uh, well, explain all three parts. Right. So when we when we look at behavior, we there's or oh, let's take a step back, like self awareness. Yeah. So for me, self awareness is twofold. Right, there's internal self-awareness and there's external self-awareness. So internal self-awareness is your value system, your thoughts, your feelings, um, your, your core values. Those are things that are clear to you, but not really clear to other people. They're not observable. Yeah. And then you have external self-awareness, which is your behavioral patterns, um, observable behavior, just things that you do, your idiosyncrasies. Yeah. Those are things that are obvious to other people, but not really clear to you. Yeah. And when you speak about being self-aware, you want to make sure there's a marriage between the two of those uh, and they are cohesive, right? So there's DISC, which answers how questions. So how a person prefers to show up in an environment. And all of the different uh, indices, that, that there's three different indexes, uh, indices, um, they answer different questions. Mm -hmm. So DISC answers how questions. 
well, how would this person behave in this environment? How do they like to show up? And then there's some- Give me an example. How do, how do I like to show up? Because you know me. Right. How do I like to show up? So based on the DISC framework, you would be a high I, but also a high C. So you also have a unicorn profile, right? Where most people are purely, they have purely one dominant quadrant. Mm -hmm. You're dominant in two areas, right? And two areas that are polar opposites from each other. Yeah. So you're a person who really loves people. Uh, you're a people person. You're the star that walks in the room. Uh, you can feel people, right? You tell when the vibe is off. Mm -hmm. You like energy. You like experience. And at the same time, you're very cautious and conscientious and thoughtful. And you're a person who likes uh, to ask questions and be correct, right? Uh, analytical, Right, exact and precise. And you usually don't have those in the same person, but you are like both of those in one person, right? So for me, it's really amazing to see, and I'm not surprised at how successful you are um, as a podcaster because you're the perfect person to ask people questions. And why you're, is that? You're naturally curious about people. Which is, is showing is the, up where? Is the eye, uh -huh. right? You're naturally curious about people. And then you're a master at asking questions to unpack information and data. So it just makes sense. Which shows up in what? The C. Right? So there's four quadrants. Yeah, let's 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 walk. Let's let's, let's take this let's take this right, slow, okay? Up, right? And um, maybe uh, we can set uh, we can give people a link to take the assessment. I don't know if um, I'm feeling I'm gonna try okay. If there's a link below then great, you can take the assessment. If not, then we got to yeah, figure out a way. Feeling generous. Let's, 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 let's do right? <laughs> all right, so let's, let's walk through so, all four so, quadrants. So DISC, right? Mm -hmm. So it's D-I-S-C, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it was created by Dr. William Marston in uh, the 1920s, right? He's uh, the person who created uh, the first iteration of the lie detector, um, created a Wonder Woman. Um, he was a Harvard PhD that created this framework to really show the observable behavior in humans in these four quadrants. Mm -hmm. So there's D, which speaks to being decisive. So people who are high D personalities, they're very driving, very demanding, very assertive personalities. I speaks to being interactive. So it speaks to how people like to engage people, how they like to express emotion, right? They're interactive people. The S speaks to being uh, stable. So what type of pace you like. So these are people who are really stable, really cool, calm, collected, really predictable in their behavior. And then you have the C, which speaks to people who are cautious or conscientious. Mm -hmm. So these are people who are very analytical. They can be perfectionist. They're really systematic in the way they approach things. They're very much uh, measure twice, cut once yeah. type of individuals. Yeah. And everybody has um, a unique mix. So nobody's just one thing, yeah. but there's a unique mix, but everybody has a dominant preference. I'm sure. That's why like some people, they'll say, and again, like I've... Um, can you introduce me to like really understanding I, you hear about it and you're learning it mm -hmm. and uh i studied it for a couple of years and like i just i would call dewan like yo this is when i was doing one-on-ones like yo i got this client man they had 99d and they had 13 i he's like yo just give me the number so eventually i'm calling like yo i got this person man 69 40 42 88 76 and he's like yo this is who they are i'm like huh how did you know that? How did you know that? Like it was, it was just, it was crazy based on the unique blend. And then I'll get on the phone and I'll tell them about themselves based on the numbers. And they're like, yo, you know me, mm -hmm. right? Like, so it, it's super accurate if you know how to do it. But my, my point is people will say, yo, I'm a D or I'm a C or I'm a S. When you're not really that, you're your whole profile. Yeah. Am I right? Like, yeah. we're, like, talk, like, how do people get that thing wrong where they figure, because that's my highest one, it's not as important as my lowest one? So the thing, well, just in human nature, people need language to identify with something. And because mm -hmm. there are different personality types, people are going to want to identify with a particular profile. And mm -hmm. it's really easy to help people understand. But everybody has all four quadrants in their behavior 
just some to different degrees, yeah. right? And there is no good, there is no bad, there is no right or wrong. You know, high doesn't mean good, low doesn't mean bad. It isn't anything like that. But when we look at it, it's a snapshot of how you prefer to behave. And one of the things that I found was that although we have a preference for how we want to behave, most people are not behaving the way they prefer to. And so that's why mm, say, say it again, say it again, say it again. Most people aren't behaving the way they prefer to. Right. So um, most people, so we, we look at natural and adaptive behavior, right? So when we think about a person's natural behavior, this is who you are when you're most comfortable in your preferred environment and how you choose and prefer to show up. Mm -hmm. And then we have adaptive behavior, which is how you behave when you're under stress, when you're being observed, and when you feel uncomfortable. Now, you know, if I'm speaking or I'm doing anything, I usually ask people, how many of you are experiencing stress right now? Most of the time, people are raising their hand. And I let people know that if you are experiencing stress, I can assure you it's because you're behaving in your adaptive and not your natural. And, psycho and subconsciously, we're mm. always trying to return back to our natural behavior because that's where we feel safe. Yeah. And that shows up in the assessment. And that shows up in the assessments. All right, let's walk, let's walk through each one of them. So the D, your decisive matrix. Walk right. through that. So people who are high D personalities, so if you're looking at an assessment, this would be some, you're either, well, what I'll classify as high, somebody like 65, 70 and above. This is a person who is really assertive. They're really demanding they're driving, they're forceful, right? They like to take control and take charge. Mm -hmm. They are wired to solve problems. Whenever something is going on in the environment, they immediately assert themselves to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, if a person has a low D, right? They're low in that quadrant, then that means that they are more methodical, right? They take more time, they're thoughtful in how they solve a problem. Yeah. Right. So you'll be able to tell by the speed in which a person goes to approach a problem. Right. Yeah. Now, if we look at people who are uh, high eyes in that quadrant, people who are but real, real quick before, before we move on to the eye, I am um, a low D. Right. Mm -hmm. Meaning it takes me a little longer to make a decision because I'm not I'm not decisive. Like even when we go out to eat it. I'm getting better at it because I'm more conscious, but trying to figure out what's on the menu. Golly, how long it take you to figure out what's on the menu? Like, we, you just, you just, <laughs> you got, <laughs> you're, you're probably not a high D because it takes you a little while because I don't, I, I don't want to make the wrong decision. I'm thinking through, if I get this and I don't like it, but my heart is leaning towards this. And some people um, think that is an isolated situation mm -mm. when it's not. That's who you are. And it probably shows up in a bunch of different areas, right? Yep, it shows up everywhere. Nothing is compartmentalized. If you uh, if you do it in one area, you do it in all the other areas. You're just probably not conscious of it, mm -hmm. right? And it's not a bad thing though, because sometimes I take my time in making business decisions, and it's the right one. Here's the thing: there is a game. This one game that's designed for only you to win at. And, the, and if you just figure out how to play your game and put yourself in that environment, you're going to win without fail. But mm. it's getting people to accept who they are and like operate in the fullness of that and be consistent at doing it. When I look at an assessment, that's the objective data. I can look at that and in two seconds, I know I can tell you how you show up where your blind spots are where you're really strong but i don't know why and that's where the conversation comes about about your your life story your lived experience what so where does this come from oh well when i was right so for me i'm a high d i'm a 99 d right even in my adaptive behavior i'm a 95 d people are like well yeah well i grew up i'm an 80s baby i grew up in the bronx the crack era in the projects, right? And so I'm in an environment that's very hostile. And when you're in an environment like that, it's you're either at the table or you're on the menu. So <laughs> you pick a side, right? So all of those things, and there's other things that contributed to it, but there's a reason why, and we can get into that later, but there's a biggest fear that drives everybody to behave the way that they do. 
And once you understand that everybody is operating from this biggest fear because all people want to be safe, you go, ah, it unlocks something and you start to treat people with a level of compassion because you realize they're not doing something to you. You understand that they just want to be safe. And that's why they do the things that they do. Mm, they just want to be safe. But their mind is telling them that if I operate in this manner, then I'm safe subconsciously. We're not thinking mm -hmm. down this line, but me being a low, a low D, it, it says, if I don't rush into a situation, then I'm safe. I'm, I'm, I'm safe to make the right decision. But from you, your perspective, 99D, you're saying, if I just make a decision and go with it, I'm safe. I won't be eaten. Exactly. So there was a situation... There was a situation last night, right? And I immediately jumped into action and then I caught myself and I said, okay, that's not the best approach. <laughs> Let me go, right? But that's me being aware. That's your but natural. Nine times out of 10, I'm going to act immediately if I feel like there's a problem. That's how I choose. That's who I am. That's how I'm wired. You're a person who, okay, everybody just take, take a moment. Let me, let me figure that out. Mm -hmm. And so there is no right or wrong way. We have to figure out whose way works for the situation and mm -hmm. this, this instance. Good, good. Okay, move, moving on to the eye. My favorite, because I'm a 99 eye. 99 eye. Okay, let's describe this eye. <laughs> right, so the, the, the high eye is a person who is, they're social butterflies, right? They're, they are uh, really influential. They're really persuasive. They're, they're social beings, right? They like to connect with people. They like to show love, right? Yeah. They're, they're usually the the star in an environment. Yeah. People are just natural. They naturally gravitate to them. They're wired for experience. So they want to create a positive experience. A person who is lower on the eye spectrum, right? They're not as expressive, they're more guarded, they're more standoffish, right? And they don't necessarily have a social tank. So a person who is a high I, nine times out of 10 are gonna be extroverted. Nine times out of 10. A person with a low I is most likely going to be introverted, right? Because it speaks to how you engage people socially and then how you express emotion. Mm -hmm. A person with, it, it doesn't mean a person with a low I doesn't have emotion, it's just they, they, they guard themselves and they're really, really careful about how they express it and who they express it with. Yeah. A person with a high eye is going to be more expressive, more visibly expressive in uh, how they interact with people, how they express emotion. Gotcha. Uh, talk to me about like the the um, maybe the triggers of an eye. And I know it's, it's going to be based on experience, but maybe not the triggers, but uh, what are some of the issues that a high eye and a low eye would face? Right, so a person who is person who's a high eye is wired for people. They're wired for people and they're wired for experience. Mm -hmm. What they're not wired for is details. Right? They're not wired for things that are difficult. Right? Because they want every high eyes are wired to make everybody feel appreciated and everybody feel good. So when things, when there's like a mood kill or there's like some whack juice in the environment and mm. the energy's bad, they're like, ah, I'm gonna go over here. Or they're really creative and they're really thoughtful, but when things have to be fit in a particular box or a specific way, it kind of um, dampens their creativity. So things where there's attention to detail, a high eye may struggle with. Like don't ask them to remember or write this down. Mm. They're more go with the flow. They're in the moment. Yeah, they're in the moment. Somebody who is a, a low eye, right? They're gonna, they're going to excel, um, really in, a, in an environment where they have to be thoughtful and calculated in how they express themselves. The like, think before you speak or think yeah. before you share, right? But where they will struggle is in social environments because they're very guarded and they don't really trust. People. They don't really give people the benefit of the doubt. So it takes time to gain their trust and get them to open up. But once you get them to open up, right, then you got them. Mm. So those, are, those again, it's specific to how they engage people and express themselves. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So moving to the S. Right. The so S. S speaks to pace, right? Mm. And these are individuals who like stability. They're wired for stability. So... 
an S likes for things to be cool and calm, right? They're usually super chill, yeah. like super chill. Um, they're really difficult to read at face value. Mm-hmm. Every, every profile has a corresponding emotion with it. And the emotion attached to a high I is void of emotion. So they, I mean, yes, sorry, a S. Yeah. They guard themselves because they like everything to be stable. So they don't want to shake anything up. They don't want to necessarily change anything because they've already adjusted to the current environment. And high S, it means they move at a slower pace. Very slow pace. So if you're looking at an assessment, there's almost an inverse relationship, right? So the higher your S is, the more slow you get, right? The more... Right, so with the other ones, you would think you're more aggressive in this area, but with an S, the higher it is, the slower you are to do something, mm-hmm. and the lower you are, the more restless and sort of anxious and active you are. Yeah. Right, but S's care about everyone being supported, stability in the environment. They are wired to create security, and they're wired to to support the people and the things in the environment. They are the ride dies, right? When you hear about somebody's a ride die, that's nine times out of 10 gonna be a, somebody who has a high S in their profile. Mm. You know what's crazy, you're high S. So like you, I have a unicorn profile in that I'm a high D and I have a high S. Right. Yeah. So it's like even we're playing Monopoly, right? <laughs> and our ass do uh, uh, I'll ask Dewan a question like, yo, trade me that or sell me that. And I can see when the S kicks in because you won't respond right away. I'll say, hey, do this. And you look like, you know, in my, in my eye, I'm like, okay, what's the answer? Like, what's the, and like, he's, he's going to like, metho- once his brain starts moving, it's like a real systematic way of moving, right? There's it's a just, process to there's everything. a process. S is a process oriented. So they go through a checklist. Like, so, you know, when like you sign up for like an account and they go through this verification process, okay, put your name, mm-hmm. put your profile, put your card information, but yeah. that's how a S's mind thinks it's in this sequential order almost because right. they follow processes. Right. So your D says, I'm not, I'll answer this question, but I have to answer the question in my my order, in my pace. I'm going to answer the problem. I'm going to solve the problem. I'm going to do it in my time at my pace. You're not going to rush me. Right. And that's what I, that's what I used to think that your, your aggressiveness or your, um, your decisiveness has something to do with speed and it doesn't. No. It's not like... You would think like the, yo, people say, yo, I'm a high D. I just be, but that's not necessarily true, especially if the S is dictating something else or the C for that matter. Yeah, the D is going to dictate my willingness and openness to go solve that problem. I'm never running from solving a problem. I, I actually am one of those weird people that like will gravitate to the problem. Mm. If there's a problem, I want to I wanna solve it, right? So based on... You know, my lived experience, right? If there's a, and I, for me in, in assessing and analyzing my profile, right? The high D and the high S, I always, you know that uh, like 50 had that video. He's like, everybody, it's like 50 want a problem. It's like, I don't want a problem, but if you say there's a problem, then I say no problem. Right? Like, <laughs> I want there to always be peace, but right. I'm willing to go to war to make sure that it's peaceful. I hate tough conversations. I don't mind them. Let's get, let's get straight to it. That's I how I am. It, bro. I, run from, I run from difficult conversations. For me, if we don't address it, it makes me uncomfortable. And I don't want to be uncomfortable. So I'd rather get right to the problem and get it out the way because I know it's eliminated. But if it sits and it festers and it's just sort of this elephant in the room, I physically feel uncomfortable. Like my body, I feel anxious and I start feeling fearful and then it makes me more aggressive. Mm. And then when I'm more aggressive, then it becomes more destructive. So I've learned... Let me just deal with this head on and pause and then just go about it. <laughs> yeah, you know what's, what's crazy? Once I started to learn this and understand it, yeah. it helped me tremendously in my entrepreneurial journey because like I know, you, you know, like it's, we, we go through life and we deal with our emotions. Like mm-hmm. we have certain emotions. When I saw it in the assessment, 
it allowed me to reflect on why and what's happening, allowed me to pinpoint, it. oh, this is why I am the way I am. And I'm not necessarily looking to change the way I am, but I'm going to wrap, um, I'm, I'm gonna wrap people and processes around the way that I am. So if I know that because my high eye, I know I'm like high energy, I need to have somebody in my organization that isn't really into how people feel about, or they're not necessarily focused on the experience that people have, they're focused on the business because I'll always be focused on the experience. So here's the thing. Everybody has a superpower and everybody has a blind spot, right? Everybody has a challenge. Yeah. Blind spots are natural. Weaknesses are manufactured. Explain that. Right? You just said, right, like, oh, I'm strong at this, I'm weak at this. But the way people are, we stick to people that we know, that we like, so people that are like us. So if you're gonna associate with people, nine times out of 10, you're gonna associate with people just like you. If you have a business, you're gonna hire people that are just like you. But you're hiring because there's a gap in the company. Yeah. But if you hire everybody that's just like you based on what you like and what you feel, you duplicate the problem. So now it becomes more of a problem because you have more people doing this thing and, and you don't actually, like you don't solve anything. So my whole mentality is let's use our differences to make a difference because you're strong at something that I'm not. Like our profile specifically fit like a glove because mm -hmm. I'm a high D with a low I with a high S and a low C. And you're a low D with a high I with a low S and a high C. Anytime we do anything together, it's just going to flow because yeah. we cover each other. I'm going to see where you have a moment of hesitation. I'm going to jump. Yeah, I'm gonna jump to okay, and you're gonna be like, okay, you need to relax. Let's calm down, <laughs> right? You're gonna crack a joke to this levity or something, right? But it just flows. Mm -hmm. When you have a team of people who understand the value that they bring to the environment and where they struggle and how that relates to the other person, now the other person knows where they can add value, and you don't have to ask me. Once I know it, I jump right into action. Mm -hmm. And when you have a collective, when you have a team, right, whether it's a relationship, whether it's in a work environment, everything just flows different. People think one plus one equals two or two plus two equals four. No. When you have a bunch of people, this economy is a scale. Once you have a bunch of people who have bought into the same, you know, sort of secret sauce or the same mentality and everybody's working together you go much further than you would have gone by yourself. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. This is good, this is so good. Uh, you got your assessment? Uh, no. You got it, right? You got it, you got your assessment? Yes. All right, cool, we, we're gonna get into it. A little, we're gonna get into it, all right? Because I'm going, I'm going to have you give him your numbers, oh, okay? Yeah, we, <laughs> and then you're gonna have a conversation. It's, it, it really is an amazing experience. Okay, all right, so let's go into uh, C, which is my, my other favorite, my favorites are my INC, that's who I, yeah, yeah, yeah. My so eyes. there's like a primary and a secondary, right? So your secondary is a C. So the C speaks to being cautious and conscientious. Mm -hmm. And again, we spoke about the emotion associated with each profile. This comes from fear. The emotion is fear. Mm -hmm. So C's have a fear of making a mistake. Mm -hmm. A C's greatest fear is criticism. That's why they're a C. Yeah. They hate making mistakes. That's why they take their time. They ask a lot of questions. They're very exact and precise. They're always taking notes. They want to, uh, I like to think of them as like the anchor of reality, right? In an environment. Most people would be like, yeah, they like a mood kill. Mm -hmm. But when you're all in the clouds and you're super hype, but we're going to do this or with that, the C's going to be like, well, we need to go do this and make sure that all of this is done first before we can do that. Because if we don't, this is going to happen, right? They have everything mapped out. Yeah. They measure twice and cut once. They want to make sure everything is done right the first time. Mm -hmm. so they don't want to return back or do things. They're going to make sure everything is done with precision and it's pristine and everything is perfect the very first time it's executed. So think about a sniper. They're not like, you know, a shotgun or a mercenary that just runs in shooting like Rambo. Mm -hmm. The sniper is going to wait. They're checking the weather, the earth's rotation. They're looking at everything when it comes to ballistics mm -hmm. and then they take one shot and it's over. Mm. And that, yo, that's super valuable. But some people get mad at the C, though, 
especially in a in a environment you may be inclined to get mad at and see if you weren't like a high S and understand it, but because who wants to wait for you to be that detailed to tell you all so. Um, so it is probably explain it a little bit, Yanni. So <laughs> Yanni does, uh, the editing of like all the videos and the clips and, uh, and Reese too. I know Reese hates everything about this, but there be these little details. Mm -hmm. It's these little things that are off the way the video ends or some like the caption and it's all these little things and it appeared to be nitpicky, but I can't help see it. Yeah. I'm a 77C. It makes you feel unsafe. When you, again, when you realize that everybody is behaving to keep themselves safe, it, you literally are feeling uncomfortable physically, mentally, emotionally, if you don't ask the question. Yeah. Like, you have to, you have to know. Yeah. So, Close that me. they want, they want to be a, a high the middle C. Door. A high C needs to know the information so that they can execute. But to somebody who's not a high C, they're going to feel like I'm being interrogated or you don't think I know, you know, I'm not, a, I don't know what I'm talking about or yeah. why are you asking me all of these questions? Like, I don't see the sense in it. Yeah. And most people don't want to execute at the level of quality, right? At the, at the level a high C wants to. A high C wants to get straight A's. They want to be, they want everything to be the absolute best because they fear any sort of criticism or mistake. Mm -hmm. So no, we need we need to tweak that because somebody might look at it like, uh, I don't, I don't. That's a high C, yeah. or high C's may take too long because they're asking so many questions. So with a high C, you have to give them a deadline. This needs to be done right. So uh, I think it's called Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law says that. A human will get a job done in whatever time allotted to them. So if I gave you three weeks to get the podcast set up, you'll take all three weeks. Mm -hmm. If I told you you had to get the podcast done in 48 hours, you'll find a way to execute in 48 hours. Parkinson's mm -hmm. law. But a C, that applies to a C. They need a deadline to execute. Mm -hmm. Or they will take infinite amount of time because they're searching for perfection and that doesn't exist. Excellence does, though. Mm, low C Low C Person like me They like to just flow Right They are Not to say that they They Don't adhere to rules But they'll break a rule Right They mm. will find a way Like For a low C If the rule doesn't make sense I'm not following it mm. They're more challenging They uh, Resist and challenge the status quo They're more pioneering They want to go off the beaten path And go do something in a new creative way That is sort of against The standard and the norms Yeah Right So for a high For a high, I mean for a low C To be in a really structured Rigid environment Is super uncomfortable for them mm -hmm. They feel boxed in Where If it's structured that's where a high C feels comfortable. Yeah. So that just lets you know the difference. I need, that I need the box. I need someone to tell me exactly what's happening because I, 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 I can't, I want to know how things are supposed to be done so that I can do them the way that they're supposed to be done. And again, there's no good, bad, right or yeah. wrong, but it's all situational. I don't like structure, but I know that I need it. Mm -hmm. So I know I need somebody to give me some guardrails or, I'm Hulk in a China shop. I'm going to break something. Something's <laughs> going to go left, right? And for somebody like yourself, who's a high C, there's certain times where you need urgency or you need to just jump out there and get it started. And once you're in it, you know how to navigate, but you will obsess and overthink about it. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Okay, so um, I, I, w I wish we had time to get into like... We're gonna, first off, we'll probably be... And I, actually, I was, I was sitting here and I was like... Yo, Dewan, we are going to do a podcast together. Me, you, uh, we're bringing Kendall. Um, and like this needs to be a running conversation so people can understand how to improve because there's so many there's so many different nuances in the disc, right? Some people like are just looking at the disc and maybe they don't trust it because one, when you got it, you couldn't understand it yourself or two, mm -hmm. the person that was relaying the information, they didn't really understand it and add some sort of understanding about how it works. But 
I'm telling you, I've when I speak on stages, nobody cries. You know what I mean? It's, it's not an emotional thing. But when I do these assessments, and I'm seeing where the issue is, if, you, if you're telling me, here's what I'm dealing with, I can look at your assessment and find out the problem. Mm-hmm. I can just see it. So like the tears flow. But I did one with a couple one time. And it, it, it seemed like the most powerful therapy session ever, right? But it's not me. It's just me reading the profile, understanding it. So I, I want to go into like maybe some of the, the um, real quick, let's go into adaptive. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go into those three other areas that enhance the DISC assessment. Right. So we spoke about natural and adaptive behavior. So mm-hmm. your natural is who you prefer to be. Yeah. Right, your most comfortable self. And the adaptive is when you are in an uncomfortable situation and you adapt your behavior to yep. fit an uncomfortable situation. There's actually value in operating in your adaptive as long as you don't do it for too long. So the analogy that I use is we're mammals, right? We're land mammals. So what we need to do in our natural environment is to breathe. We yeah. inhale, we exhale. Now, if I took you and threw you in water, which is a foreign environment, and you did what you naturally do in that environment, what's gonna happen? you die. You'll die. So you have to adapt. There's value in adapting your behavior in this foreign environment. But if you adapt and you hold your breath for too long in this foreign environment, what happens? You die, same outcome. Right? So most people are struggling, and we're in a vicious cycle Right, because we're most likely not in an environment that's tailor made to who we truly are. Right, we're going into spaces that are not tailor made for us and fitting in. Mm-hmm. And so then, when things aren't going right, we're stressed, and you go into this cycle. So yeah. adaptive behavior is important as long as you have a deadline. Long as it comes to an end eventually, mm-hmm. you cannot stay there in perpetuity. Yeah. Right. So. I'll give you an example, my, my eye, and I'm, I'll let you just speak to it. High eye. Nope. Natural. Yep. Adaptive. Low eye. What does that mean? So what that would tell me automatically is naturally you're very trusting. You're very, like, people-oriented. You like to show love. Hey, what's going on? Until you get stressed or you get upset or you feel... Um, observed or seen and then you become you shut down essentially you become less 100%. you become less trusting real bad right you, you turn off emotionally socially you go flat so somebody may go from seeing day yo what's going on and you just nah, I'm cool alright I mean it's obvious to everybody that you're not okay but <laughs> you're not about to let anybody connect with you on that level Mm-hmm. So when I see the relationship between those two things, I know exactly what the issue is. Oh, you turn off when you get upset. You shut down. Yeah. You, cl- you lock people out. Mm-hmm. What's your biggest swing in natural and adaptive? Uh, my S. My S. So I go from a 77S to a 10. Dang. Yeah. And that means? So what that means is when I'm, when I'm being myself and how I prefer, I'm chill. I'm cool. Everything is, is smooth. But once I realize there's a problem or I get stressed or somebody like agitates me, I go from start to stupid in 2.2 seconds. Like I'm on, <laughs> I'm going from Bruce Banner to Hulk, like immediately. Mm. And so a lot of times I need that little two, three second buffer to catch myself before I go do something that I'm going to have to go say sorry for later. Mm. Yo, real quick. So do we have, do we have the, which mic is working? The handheld is working? Okay. So um, what's your, we'll go with Trey. Trey. Here's the thing, bro. Here, okay. And just, I, I, didn't, I haven't looked at your assessment, but I would imagine that Trey has to be. He's an S. At, what's that? I think he's an S. How do you know? Watch, I've been watching him since. You don't know him though. I don't know. You got, do you got, you don't got a camera on Trey, right? All right, sit here. Sit here, Trey, real quick. Um, you've ne- have you talked to him before? Have y'all ever had a conversation, Trey? No. I mean, I saw him, but I never had a conversation. All right, so let me, what, what, are, your, what are your numbers? 
What you said, because I, I gave it to everybody on my team. Uh, you don't have to take it. So what are your what are your just start off with the higher number? No, nah, just just give me your D I S and C. All right, so the D is seventeen. The I is sixty. Should I bring the mic closer to you? The D is seventeen. The I is sixty, and the S is seventy seven. <laughs> C is ninety nine. <laughs> oh. Yo, it takes my brother for yo, and I knew it. It's more impressive that you've never talked to him. He said, yo, he's a C. He's an S for sure. But I, so Trey, he'll have, he'll do a whole, like I'll be like, yo, I need these thumbnails done, bro. <clears throat> he'll do them. Um, but I'm like, yo, Trey, I need it. He said, oh, I did it. I just didn't send it to you. You know what? He's a C. Talk so me. he doesn't want to be criticized. So it's not done until he's gotten all the feedback and it's complete based on all the feedback so he doesn't get criticism. And I gotta like look at it like multiple times and like. <laughs> Cause you're, myself. you're anticipating what Dave's gonna tell you or potentially what he'll tell you. Yeah. And it's not done What I bet you any amount of money he's like, oh, here's a draft. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's what I was thinking. Right. And he's like, well, what do you think? All right, let me go fix it. Like, or if you don't respond the way that he wanted you to respond or thought you might respond, I don't know, let me go. I'm going to just go fix a couple things and let me. If you don't tell him I need it right now, he's going to work on it until you force him to give it to you. Yo, what made you not ever talking, not having a conversation? What makes you say, oh, he's ass? So, one, I can look at his body language and his affect. He has no affect. So he doesn't let people necessarily read him. And he, I watched in an individually and in a group environment, right? He likes to just play in the background. So somebody who's a high S and specific, but well, he's a high C, but he also has a high S. They don't like attention. They will play the background. They like to support what's going on. They do not want to be in the front. Mm. So... He's also somebody that's very diligent. So I paid attention to when he called you, like, hey, this is some stuff going on. That would never happen. If it was me, I'd have just been like, yeah, we're going to figure something out. I'd have told you what happened when we came back. But little things like that, those are observable things. A high D and a high I, would, they use language like, well, why not? We just jumped to go do stuff. And somebody be like, yo, you can't do it. Well, why not? Let's just... A high S and a high C, they ask what if. They use what if language. Well, well, what if this happens? Or what if they say this? So I just pay attention to, I was watching how he moved with people by himself, the phone call. I pay attention to all of that type of stuff. I already knew. He just. That's crazy. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. Yo, I'm telling you, he does this stuff all the time, bro. Like, we'll, we'll be in a crowd of people like, all right, give me your numbers. And he'll like, yo, he'll tell yeah, you just, all about. We had a thing like, give me the numbers. Like yeah. we, me and Dave get on the, or Dave, we be, or we just be talking about somebody. Mm -hmm. Yo, bro, just give me the numbers. Like he be like, yeah, I was talking to so so. Give me the numbers, <laughs> and it's just in the conversation. <laughs> and we like, oh okay, like cool, got it. And it it just goes like that. Let me now, let me let me see let me see your assessment. Now the no, good thing, playing. the good thing, right, is that he's going to take the time necessary because he's a high S. Mm -hmm. He's going to take the time necessary to make sure it's flawless mm -hmm. every time. Would that lend to the S or the C? That's, that's, he has a high S and a high C. Mm -hmm. So he's going to make sure, right? So one of the issues that I, one of the issues that I see is a person will have, it, I actually see it in your profile. Where's that table at? I'll see it in your profile where you have a really high C, but a low S. Mm -hmm. What that will automatically tell me is you have really high standards, but you never take enough time to actually meet your own standards because you're moving too fast. Mm. He takes his time. He moves at a slow enough, consistent pace to meet the standard of a high C. And I gotta like take note of everything. Right, like and then he's <laughs> and then he's a low D, so he's super methodical. Mm -hmm. He's calculated in how he's how he's right. approaching everything. Give me an example of like how, okay, this is, this is assessment. You can uh, see uh, the natural and adaptive. I mean, I got the numbers. What, so I'm good. Yeah. You got the numbers in your head? <laughs> what is your biggest, well, actually, they can see it on this thing. Okay. You don't mind people seeing this, right? Okay. Good. Well, even if you had a problem, you wouldn't tell me because you're a low D. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> All right, so give me one of your biggest challenges, and um, I'd like to hear Dewan kind of talk to it. My biggest challenge is like being rushed to like do something. Mm -hmm. It's like it's just like a force, and like the person is like persistent on getting it done at that time, and like now I have to like think through it, and it's taking me like real long to like push through and come up with something, especially with designs, because um, people yeah. just need it like quickly. So that's like my biggest challenge. And also telling people like no mm -hmm. in the moment because I'm just always like used to saying yes because I don't want to like let people down. Right. So there's two things. And I wish we had time to really, we, we, we got to wrap up. I wish we had time to do like this and go into oh, yeah. attributes because this is the game changer. It's not just disc. Right. So disc answers the how questions. Values answers why. What, what is motivating you to be the way you are? And then there's attributes, which answers the what questions. What are you naturally gifted at? Everybody wants to know, what's my gift? What am I gift? That's what that's what it's going to show you, yeah. right? And, and attributes. Yeah. So for you, you perceive everybody as rushing you. Mm -hmm. The reality is, as a person with a high S, you're, you don't have a sense of urgency. Right. Right? So... You struggle with urgency. So you perceive most people as rushing you or being aggressive or being pushy when they're not. You just take more time to do things than the average person does. Yeah. Right? And then you have a fear of being criticized. So your high S is your pace. So you really take your time and then you're afraid to make a mistake. So you constantly overthink. You're creating scenarios that don't even exist. You're just... You're trying to play off every scenario. If I do this, this person's going to do that, right? And it, you are making most of this stuff up. The low D is you're not going to make a decision. So the, the challenge with uh, the low D but the high S, high S's believe things are supposed to go a certain type of way. They're process oriented. They just don't want to make the decision. But if you make the decision and they don't like it, they got a problem with it. But they won't communicate it to you because they're non-confrontational. So you don't want a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that sound like you? Yeah. <laughs> so he'll secretly be feeling away and not and say won't and see. won't say anything. So it's like this resentment will start to fester. And that's the dangerous part because you're keeping receipts on people and they don't know that they've offended you. And then you explode two months later and they're like, well, what just happened? I didn't even know. You like, nah, because last week, <laughs> <laughs> two months ago, bro, I remember right? you said. <laughs> so, so somebody who is a high S, you have to, they're naturally accommodating. They're going to say yes. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that that's really what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what you want to eat? Uh, I'm cool. I eat whatever. No, no, yeah. no. What don't you want to eat? Yeah, I don't want Chinese. You got to like really take time mm. to build with them because they naturally defer to everybody. Bro, this is crazy. But and that's why. They started doing, like they started, like they'll ask me to do something. They'd be like, are you sure? <laughs> like, are you sure that you can do this or that you have like the time to do it? Um, and so that like works better because it gives you like that second like confirmation to make sure that you can do it. Yeah. Anytime I'm talking to somebody that I know is an S, I ask them three times. Same thing. It's like, are you sure you want to do that? Okay, so, but if this happens, are you sure you're still comfortable with that? I double down just to make sure because they will tell you yes and not really mean it. Not because mm -hmm. they're being disingenuous, but they are really afraid of conflict. Yeah. They are so relational that they don't want the relationship to be soured because of a disagreement. Yeah, I, because I, I, I recognize that in Trey, I, I, I understand how to have the conversation. One, it's... Like, do you have the capacity, yeah. right? Because we had to learn that, right? Because I, I realized that- uh, He'll just say yes. Yeah, he'll just say yes. And he'll be say overwhelmed. Yes because he's a good person. He'll be drowning and won't say nothing. <laughs> right? <laughs> but even getting uh, Trey to, um, like there's, like you said, like I gotta give him a, a box. Like, so I'm like, yo, okay. What, anytime you say you're gonna do something, I typically follow up with, okay, what time? By when? 12 okay I'll have it by 12 and he'll say yeah 12 so so 12 o'clock we'll have it right he'll say yes cool we're locked in 12 we're there and now he has something to work towards and it's not about the perfection of it which probably in his head he would leave left to his own devices it's about the perfection I'm like yo this just have something by this time and he's been hitting the deadline 
just like that. With somebody, Trey? Yes. With somebody like Trey, he needs an SOP. Mm-hmm. Mandatory. Yeah. He's process oriented and he does, he's afraid of making a mistake. So if you have everything spelled out for him, he will follow it to a t- You'll never have to speak to him about anything. You won't have to speak to him about time, the process, nothing. He's wired to follow a process to the T. I love it. Yo, look, we got, when next time you come to Atlanta? I mean, I might be in two weeks, you know what I'm saying? So, yo, we're going to run another episode. Let's do it. And then, like one, one, we're just gonna start a whole another podcast on human behavior mastery. Um, listen, you, you guys, just made that up just now. Huh? Hmm? Oh, okay, I see what happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, come on, I kicked in, but I, but I, but I, I see, especially like what we're doing, like what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I, I saw it this whole episode. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. I saw it. <laughs> Look, yo, Dewan, real quick. Um, let her, let everybody know how to. Dang, this, yo, that was that was almost an hour, bro. Like it didn't even feel like that. There's really so did. much to unpack. That's what I'm saying. It can't even really be. There's so much just what we didn't episode. Even talk about. Oh, bro, there's we got years of content to deliver. So, all right, it's it's yo. First off, let everybody know how to contact. And are we gonna give out? Uh, see, the only thing is, I don't. Um, we'll have so, something. For them. Listen, okay, so let we like disc. Like just disc. Just give disc? Just give disc. Just to get the conversation going. Okay. You feel comfortable? This joint will be running forever. Yeah. It's needed. You got right. it? Yeah. All right, so we'll we'll give away so if there we'll put the link. So listen, text uh, text DISC, mm-hmm. D-I-S-C, to 347-657-6682, okay. right? Yeah. So text DISC to 347-657-6682. And they'll be able to take DISC assessment for free. Straight DISC assessment. Now, there's two other parts that are vitally important, which we'll cover on the next couple episodes yep. that we do. But... Um, this could be very, very helpful if for, to at least understand the behavior. Like... If if Dewan could really get into like the other two layers of your assessment, it will paint a picture and tell you more than you can imagine. Yeah. More than you can imagine is crazy. Yeah, I mean like with relationship with yourself, with other people. I mean, counseling session. If it, it feels yeah. like people are like, yo, this feels like therapy. I'm like, it's not. It's just we're really getting to how you're wired and why you do what you do and how you relate to the people, places and things that you come in contact with. Yeah. It's attached to everything. Yeah. It's attached to everything. Facts. There it is. Dwan, man. Let everybody know how they can contact you personally, man, and uh, leave us with some words of wisdom. Um, so, Dwan Mutunga. I'm African, so I'm going to spell it for you. Uh, <laughs> D-E-W-A-N-E uh, M-U-T-U-N-G-A That's D-E-W-A-N-E M-U-T-U-N-G-A Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, I'm accessible, um, holla at me. Um, I would say the, the greatest thing that I've learned in assessing, you know, like going through my assessment all these years and working with everybody is, one, everybody, I'm sorry, one, everybody's always doing their best, and that's really challenging. And in understanding that you're always doing your best, impact doesn't, like, Intent doesn't negate impact. So just because you had good intentions on doing something or you didn't mean to do it, it doesn't remove the impact that it had on the people around you. You didn't mean to offend me, but you did. How do we avoid that? How do we change the behavior to make sure that that never happens again or to minimize how it happens? So once we remove the good intentions or we we don't stop there and we start looking at the overall impact of what we do and what we don't do, like, and we start having conversations about it, relationships change, right? We start to um, treat ourselves better and everything around us ultimately benefits from it, so. Yeah. There it is. Listen, man, we can't close out no better than that, man. Click the link below. There, uh, will, there will be some goodies for you. Um, there's also a, um, there's a program that we all put together. Mm-hmm. For uh, for uh, like truly understanding, yo, and with this, you'll be able to take the assessment and assess yourself. Yep. 
Like you'll literally without like, you'll be able to take the assessment, assess yourself, identify what's going on with you and with your family members and they can take the assessment and you will literally be able to read the numbers the way that uh, Dewad, myself and Kendall reads. Here's the thing. There's the golden rule, mm-hmm. right? Like treat people the way you would like to be treated. Yeah. We follow the mantra of the platinum rule, which is treat people the way they want to be treated. Mm-hmm. Don't treat, I can't treat you the way I want to be treated because we different people. Exactly. You may not like that. Yeah. But the platinum, you know what I'm saying? The platinum rule is let me treat you the way you want to be treated. And it may take a little bit of time. It takes a while. But once I treat you the way you want to, anything that I need is going to just come to me, right? Like we're just going to have a better relationship. So, you know, the information there is going to allow you to, you know, self-examine and then improve the way you connect and relate to other people. I love it. Yeah, I need that's a clip. <laughs> that one right there. Yo, listen, man, man, you can't close out no better than that, man. Make sure you follow my brother, Dewan. You'll be seeing us do a lot of stuff together. Um, and also, go get you some social proof, man. Go build something. Go get some information. Get something valuable you can share. Uh, but come back and share it with your community because that's the only way our community grows. All right? We are out of here. Peace. Peace. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now. I think the thing that really locked me into more of an aggressive means was um, as kids, um, I had a, you know, my older brother was killed by police officers, right? And he was a teenager, like.